Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, as I offer these words uh, this morning, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold and a lamb of your own flock and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. One might say that uh, Carl had a very active life of correspondence with his bishops. (laughs) And that, that you never knew what you might receive in the mail or what thought you might have uh, be given to you. And one day I opened a a brown envelope to to find in it a giant package of poetry. He wrote this particular poem in 2016 called Dirt to Dirt. The garden's getting up in years, its roots and leaves demand my care, all heaven bathes it with its tears except in summer's sun-baked glare. The roses are the knockout kind. They greet each other with colors bright and search for sun until they find the beams that feed them till the night. Their beauty comes from chemicals. Wait, what, Carl? You lost me on that one. (laughs) So Mother Nature can achieve a type of minor miracle like bedtime pills at every eve. The garden is just following the route that some of us now tread and proving that pill swallowing is just a thing right before bed. The years and days the flowers grow are up to nature, man and sod. The times we share we surely know are up to, up to doctors, pills, and God. Carl once wrote a letter on Bishop Stationery. How he got Bishop Stationery, nobody really knows placing a young seminarian in a ministry in a town where there's no Episcopal church. He also forged a letter from the mayor of Lott, Texas, whose name was Mr. Nacy, which is the chemical abbreviation for salt, and sent it to Bishop Payne asking for a new church start. I understand he wasn't quite sure what to do with that. You could often find him at clergy conference holding court regaling the young clergy with tales of yore and bishops past. You need to know, though, of all of that, that I, Andy Doyle, loved Carl Shannon. And I thought he was quite magical. I know this, too. Carl believed in God and Christ Jesus and that his Redeemer lives and that he would see him face to face. He had a faithful hope in his future. He believed that faith made a difference, though, not only to him, but also through him and into the world, from Costa Rica to Mexico, Texas, and back again, Detroit. He was religious. He was a religious social activist, putting his faith into work, into deeds not always making the bishop happy, but good for him. Carl once wrote the following, and I think it catches this. He said, love can abide many dislikes, but a multitude of likes does not make love. Like is shaky, but love is steady. Like captivates but love emancipates. Like constrains, but love embraces. Like is changeable, but love is constant. Like gets, but love gives. Like satiates, but love fulfills. He believed that God loved all, even even the seemingly unlovable, and that there was nobody outside of God's love. 
And as you and I both know, he loved Job. He loved her so much. Even after her death, he would visit with her as if she's sitting in that chair right next to his. He missed her. He loved and he missed her, and he was ready to join her again in the life to come. And I know that he has found some bounty of peace in that. Some bounty of peace with Joe, some bounty of peace with God in the shadow of God's love in which the two of them and God will never be separated again. Surely, we're going to miss his silliness and his stories and his gags with his brothers. Like when he and Joel put together that whole routine to sell holes, H-O-L-E-S, holes. To this day, I cannot pass a semi-truck with one of those giant pipes on them with a hole, you know, looking at the back of it and you see this giant hole and think, why that's one of Carl and Joel's holes, I wonder where it's going. But seriously, there are many clergy who give thanks for his wisdom, for his mentorship, and for his friendship. And perhaps most of all, something that is quite lost on many today, his pragmatic faith that believed in living life. Now, I want to say something to you kiddos. Uh, and I just want to, I'm just going to say each I've found over the years uh, in doing this job and in growing up in the church that relationships between fathers and kids are all very different. And each kid has a different relationship with their father. And at times it can be quite complicated. And for the PK, or the priest kid, it is my experience in knowing so many of you all that oftentimes one father can belong to so many others rather than just to you. Of course, I only know Carl's side of the story. I only know Carl's side of the story. But I know this. He loved you so much. And he would always talk of you with me and so many others. He was very proud. Sometimes dads just aren't good of saying that to their kids. Sometimes uh, dads are good at saying that to daughters and not to brothers just kind of the way things are. Sometimes our dads are dads of a certain generation where it's just kind of hard to have a talk like that. It feels a little emotional. But he loved you, he was proud of you, and regardless of how it seems, it's important to name that in front of you today. And that love actually with you all and with the grandkids and great grandkids will continue. Because dads are complicated too. Uh, and um, what I would say is anything left unsaid between you all <laughs> or those kind of things that you wish you had taken care of before he died, well, all that's just going to fade, you all. That's part of what's happening in the grief is that as you let go of your parents, those imperfections get washed away in time. And that what is left that you can hold on to is light and life and love and a presence 
where they are with you in an ever new and different way on a regular basis. It may seem weird, but do not, do not, not call out for them. But call their names, share the goodness of kids and grandkids and great-grandkids and the stuff that's going on. You're going to have those moments where you're like, I need to call mom and dad and tell them. Well, just don't use the phone. Just tell them and give thanks for them. I'll tell you this to you. I, I know how important family was to Carl. The brothers, the mom and dad. To him, you were always gathered around tables together and over the years, that importance of family, and think about how important that family home in Wharton was to them. That all of that, that was, was key to who, fan, who Joe and, and Carl were. And that all of us gathered around you today, in person and online, have had the privilege of being a part of your family. It's as if he made us a part of your family and invited us to sit at your table. Just as Bishop Hine and your grandparents or great-grandparents shared a life of ministry together, what a blessing Carl and Joe were to this church and this diocese and to the bishops and how we always felt a part of your lives. The Shannons for me shall ever be locked into my mind as a family around a table telling stories and jokes and tall tales a family bound by love, a kind of archetype, a, a Wendell Berry-esque family of love uh, uh, that's connected to earth and sod and, and, and with some measure of complexity with it. It all meant so much to him. And by far, it was his greatest love, the Shannon family. The first hymn we sung, Christ has made our sure foundation, uh, we sang it because Carl chose it a long time ago for us to sing. But it is the last hymn sung at Carl's vigil with family gathered around. The last words held in the air in a sacred space, a holy space created by the words themselves as life moves to death and those who are beloved are left behind. Yet she on earth hath union with God the three in one and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O oh, happy ones and holy Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly on high, may dwell with thee. Indeed, Carl, thank you for always being a dad, a brother, a friend, a peer, a mentor but most of all for reminding us of our deepest love and faith in some unexplainable mystic sweet communion. So yes, Carl, today as we gather our prayers, Lord, give us grace that we, like Carl and Joe, may on high dwell with thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.